Hey, what's going on, everyone? I'm Andrew at St. Croix Cards on Instagram, and this is Slab Stocks FC World Cup Show. And we did it, right? We are through group play. All the build up to the World Cup, all of the excitement that we had to look forward to. And I don't know if you're like me, but I have loved the fixture list over about the last two weeks. Those four games starting at 4 a.m., the last one kicking off Central Time at 1, and we have made it through. Every team has played their three group games, and we have cut the field in half. We are down to the final 16 teams, and it is going to be I think an epic knockout stage. So we're done with phase one. We're moving into phase two. And this is what we have to look forward to. If you're looking at this on YouTube, you can see the flags of the teams that are matchups, but there are some really great matchups that are coming. We will talk about these uh, a little bit at the end of the show today, but I do want today, to get into some team news that we do need to address. I want to show or kind of talk about some of those really unpredictable results that we saw. Some of the teams that are in the knockout stages, which I did not think had a chance and will have their opportunity to to get in their knockout game here over the next four days. Then we're going to look at just this overall bracket as a whole and, and we'll also talk about the guys who got their teams into the knockout stages. Some of those players who have really performed well, and we've seen a little bit of a movement in their pricing. So without further ado, let's get into team news. And the first player that I really want to talk about is Ben White. Now, Ben White has not seen a minute of action at the World Cup for England here, but he actually was sent home. He was sent home and, and were asked to go home for personal reasons. Don't know a whole lot about it and don't know how or don't have the details to that, but it looks like he is going home. He was granted that release and doesn't seem to be on his way back. So he is not going to be a part of the team moving forward in the knockout stages. It's probably not that big of a deal, uh, to be honest. Again, hasn't seen any minutes, but you never know with injuries and with the concerns that, you know, you know, if there is an injury at the back for England that he would have probably slipped in there. But Kyle Walker is now healthy, got some game action here in the group stage. So I don't think it's going to be a big issue. But for me, personally, it's one that it kind of perks my ears up. And I'm thinking, oh, no, what's going on with Ben White? Because not only is he on the Eng- on Team England, he also is an Arsenal player. And, and that's big for me. So you got you to gotta make sure you're looking out for the Arsenal guys. But Ben White is not going to be a part of the England team moving forward in the knockout stages. Next person that we got to talk about, uh, and this one for me was tough. I am a huge Nuno Mendes fan. Uh, You know, and and all, if we're we're being transparent here, I have been picking up Nuno Mendes uh, before the World Cup, even even during group break. He he missed out in game one with with muscle soreness. Didn't think much of it. And then in that second game, he he got to play, uh, played for about 40 minutes, and then, you know, pulled up with that thigh injury. It's come out of Portugal camp that he is not going to be able to continue. He is not going to play a role in Portugal's games moving forward. Uh, big blow for him. You feel bad uh, for a 20-year-old kid with so much potential. Uh, even watching, you know, he has so much pace, knowledge of the game, really excited about him. And so for him to not be on that team moving forward is, is a blow for him. Uh, kind of bums me out, but he's, he's 20 years old. Uh, and he's 20 years old who plays for PSG. He's got all the qualities, you know, and so if you're a fan of the game, it's not like, a, you know, a panic, you know, I got to get rid of every card that I bought. Still, still think he's, I, I still highly rate him. Can't wait to see how it all plays out in the Champions League. But Nuno Mendes is officially out of, of the World Cup. So bummer to see there. And then finally, a lot of people, a lot of people are, are are asking the question now, okay, what about Neymar? Brazil is moving into the knockout stages. It is time for them to, you know, this is where the rubber hits the road and, and Brazil is looked at as the favorite or one of the favorites. So what is the status of Neymar? And, it, you know, some good news out of Brazil camp after their group game today. They said, you know, he's he. it's looking pretty promising. They weren't as definitive to say that he will be there. 
Uh, but I think it's going to be extremely important for Neymar to play that role uh, for Brazil. Uh, they seem to struggle a little bit with him out of the lineup. I really think that he br- br- brings that pizzazz, that flair, uh, the ability to create uh, for Brazil. And I think that, you know, they desperately need him in that group uh, of 11 as they push to win the World Cup. So it'll be kind of a wait and see game, but they don't have a game for a couple days. So there is a little bit more rest time on that ankle. And then how, how, how well has the ankle healed? So if he does play, you know, you got to think he's not at a hundred percent, but for me personally, I'll take an 80% Neymar over almost anybody as you enter into group stage. He was, he's really motivated. Uh, seems to be very motivated to win. And so we'll have to wait and see on that one as well. But some of the fixtures, that were crazy to me. And this, you know, is just a congratulations to Australia. You know, they took a they took a big loss in the first group game against France. And everybody, I think, wrote them off and said, okay, this is kind of what's supposed to happen. And then the 1-0 win against Tunisia. And you get, like, okay, you know, good job, Australia. You got your three points. And then the shocking 1-0 win against Denmark, which puts Australia through to the knockout stages. I wouldn't have thought this was, was going to happen. I didn't think it was coming. Uh, shock to me, uh, but major congratulations to Australia for, for pulling those upsets and to get into the knockout stages. Now, because of uh, uh, getting into the knockout stages, they've got a tough matchup coming up uh, against Australia or against uh, Argentina, but really just great play. You know, two clean sheets in a row. That's pretty massive. Uh, for Australia and congratulations to them moving on. But for me, some of the most shocking results in group stages, and you can let me know what you think. I would love to know what you thought was the most surprising. Maybe it was Australia. To me, it was E and F, the groups, right? Japan finishes top of the group over Spain and Germany fails to qualify for the knockout stages. I was really kind of pulling for Germany. I really wanted to see Musiala uh, get into the knockout stages, and I wanted to see Germany you know, perform well. It's always fun when you have those massive countries, uh, those big teams get in there, uh, but Germany didn't get the job done. So Japan wins the group, tops the group, Spain comes in second. And then on the flip side, in my predictions – Uh, Before the World Cup started, I think I had Belgium and Canada moving on out of Group F, and I was 150% wrong. I was 100% wrong. I'm the first one to admit it. I thought Belgium was going to come out swinging. It seemed like they had a little bit of, you know, conflict in camp between players, which is never good. I thought Canada played really, really well uh, and just got kind of the short end of the stick. So I'm really excited to see what Canada does uh, here in 2026 when they, as as well as the United States and Mexico, host the World Cup. But we have Morocco topping the group and Croatia finishing second in that group, which was pretty surprising to me as well. But you know what? I am the one who needs to admit that I was wrong. Not only was I wrong about Belgium and Canada, I was wrong about the U.S. men's national team, and I will be the first one to admit it, but I could not be more excited. Now, way back in Road to the World Cup, if you were with us uh, on Road to the World Cup, I said I did not think the U.S. men's national team was going to win a game at the World Cup. And I based that a lot on how they looked in qualifying, but also those friendlies in September. But that 2-0 loss to Japan uh, and that kind of draw against Saudi Arabia doesn't look so bad anymore when you see that Japan tops the group. But what a game it was. I was in Milwaukee hanging out with Aaron and and Julian, and, and we were watching this live on whatnot. And it was so crazy to see that goal go in by Christian Pulisic and and I was I was wearing a brewer shirt and a lot of people were giving me stick so here you go you know there's my U.S. men's national team jersey I wore it this is kind of a two layer get up tonight you know I got the U.S. men's national team jersey on and the Arsenal gear because I got to give a shout out to Matt Turner what a great World Cup that he's having he has not given up a goal in in play, right? It's it's only a penalty against Gareth Bale in Wales. He has not given up a goal yet, but you could tell Pulisic lays out, uh, gets the goal, gets the, the United States into the round of 16, and we see some big sales. So I just want to point out this sale that happened. Now, I'm not saying that all of Christian Pulisic, uh, Pulisic's cards are going crazy. We're going to talk about that, but it seems to me as I've looked at 
you know, the market. And as I've kind of been just sifting through like, you know, sales of U.S. men's national team players and other players, it seems that I'm kind of catching on a trend and you can, maybe you're seeing the same thing, but a lot of people are actively looking for the rare stuff, you know, the, the higher, you know, the higher priced cards, low numbered, scarce, hard to find. And this kind of fits that bill. So this is the 2016 Panini Select uh, Pulisic uh, Gold Prism out of 10. It's a PSA 9. This actually sold in December of 2021 for $2,000. Now post the win against Iran and this card sold for $5,000 on November 29th. Uh, and so that you see a massive jump, a $3,000 increase on this card. Now, I'm not saying that that's happening. And let me, I want to be that, make that very clear. I'm not saying that this is what's happening across the board for Pulisic cards, you know, or other U.S. men's national team cards. It seems that, you know, the more rare, you know, the harder to find, the more scarce, the the movement of you know a positive gain is possible but we also see that cards are moving in the other direction as well which we'll get to now here's the second card that I want to I want to talk about again it's a 2016 panini select this is the tri colored prism uh the mezzanine of Christian Pulisic and this actually sold for $112.50 uh, or excuse me, let's back up a little bit further. $125 it sold for November 16th. So that's before the World Cup. Now, the day that the United States played their first game on November 21st, this card sold for $112.50. So it actually went down a little bit, $12.50. And then fast forward to after the Iran, or the Iran game, you see that this card sold for $200. Now it's all raw. There's nothing graded here, but you did see a substantial jump in price uh, over after the win. Now that, you know, that could be somebody really excited about it. It was a best offer. So it wasn't an auction. It was a best offer. So you can see people who are, are looking for maybe the earlier stuff, uh, multicolor. So it is a parallel. It's not the base. Uh, and and it did see a, a pretty pretty substantial jump in its prices. But the one card that I do want to just kind of kind of bring it back around because not every card is is going through the roof after the U.S. men's national team gets out of group. And now this goes back to the 2016 select again. This is the mezzanine. This is the silver, uh, and this is a PSA 10. Now this card sold for uh, for one thousand six hundred and twenty dollars on October thirtieth. So October 30th, you're about a month away from the World Cup. This sold for $1,620. Now, fast forward to after the Iran game, uh, you had this card, same card, PSA 10 sell for $620. Massive decrease, almost a $1,000 decrease in value. And the question then is why? So why is the multicolor going up? Why, you know, why are, is the gold prism going up? And I, and I think a lot of it has to do with with rarity, with scarcity. Now the silvers aren't numbered, you know, they are pretty, pretty rare to find. And, and you can see that, you know, as, as you look at kind of card ladder pros kind of outline of this card in Pulisic is index, you can see that it is a pop 39. So it's not like there's thousands and thousands of these out there, uh, but it is not numbered. And if you compared it, and we've done this before where we compared it to some of the other players in the set, you want to make sure that, you know, the, the value of that card seems to match that of other cards. You know, so when I, when I look at a card that I'm looking to invest in, not only am I going to compare it, you know, to previous sales, what, I'll, what I also like to do is compare it to other cards in the same set. So, you know, 2016, you know, what are some of the premier players selling for? You know, so in, in 2016, I'm definitely going to look at, you know, what is what does a Ronaldo sell for? What does a Messi sell for? I'm not saying that Christian Pulisic is on the same level as those guys, but if he's selling at or above them, that might give me like a way to say, you know what, something seems off here. I got to either do more research. I got to educate myself better. And I get it that this is a rookie card comparative to, you know, the parallels in the, the Ronaldos and the Messi's that aren't rookie cards. But I'm looking at, you know, how do these guys stack up against each other, their level of play? And is, is it worth that much money? 
You know, so you did see a steep decrease, you know, in, in this card particularly, but you do see that across the board. There's some cards that are, are, are rising in price. And, and I think it has to do with, you know, the, the market as a whole is kind of ebbing and flowing at this point. So making sure you do your research, maybe making sure you look at previous sales of the same card, but also compare it to other cards, you know, make sure that you're doing your due diligence, educating yourself and asking yourself, does this seem to, to be in line with where the market is. So, but really great game. And it, it seems like there's some great news coming out of the U S men's national team camp that he is going to be ready for tomorrow. Yes, that's right. I am filming this on Friday night. I am spending my Friday night with all of you. And that there's no other place that I would rather be because I love talking soccer. I love talking the world cup and, and I love talking cards. So this is great. And I, and I can't believe that we are on the E we're on the eve of, the knockout stages doesn't get any better than that. So let's, let's talk a little bit about Tyler Adams. Now I do want to just throw this in there as well. I think he's had one of the best tournaments for the U S men's national team. Again, when you're looking at a 2018, this is when he played for the New York city Red Bulls. Uh, this is 2018 tops MLS blue refractor. So this is out of 99. It's a pop two of a PSA nine. So it's only a pop two, extremely rare, extremely scarce. There's only one higher. So there is only one PSA 10 out there. And in August of this year, August 10th, 2022, this card sold for $109. Uh, fast forward to December 2nd. Uh, and that would be today. You're seeing this best offer accepted at $169. So you're seeing a 60, uh, $60 increase over a few months, right? Not, I mean, you're, you're seeing a healthy grow in that card over the past couple months. Now I do want to talk about Weston McKinney as well. I mean, the U S men's national team is in the knockout stages. So we got to talk about these players as well. And, and I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, autos and patch autos again, that rarity that seems to be causing cards to go up in value. The, the, the more rare they are, uh, the more they tend to to be doing well at this point. So this is a 2019 Panini Obsidian. Uh, this is the Matrix material out of Patch Auto out of 35. It is a PSA 9. October 30th, this card sold for $110. Dipped a little bit early November. November 9th, it sold for $107.50. And then after that win, it sold for $122.50 on December 2nd. So today. So you're seeing an increase in, in some of those prices as well. Again, not the same across the board. You can pick out multiple different cards and probably find that some have increased in value while others have not. Now, before we move on to Cody Gakpo, I do also just want to ask, you know, as I've been kind of looking, I've seen a volume increase in some of the, you know, as I search the Weston McKinney's, as I search uh, the the Tyler Adams, you're seeing a lot more sales, maybe not massive high number sales, but it seems that more cards are selling. And I know you can look at that at card ladder as well. The question that I had for all of you today is like, have you noticed to the, the, the rarer cards? I know in the build up to the world cup, uh, I would attend card shows and a lot of guys would say, yo, I'm holding my, all my soccer until the world cup. And now the World Cups is here, and, and I think that I, you, you do tend to see a little bit more high-end cards that are making their way into the market. You know, you have it on eBay. You have, you know, other, other auction sites are, you know, you see a lot of really great, you know, low-numbered autos, you know, early soccer. And, and for me, my question now is, do, are we seeing some of these prices decrease or go down or some of the recent sales be lower than normal just because there's so much out there and available. Now, I know some of you are like, well, maybe, maybe I'm just not seeing it all. And, and before the world cup, it was all there, but I mean, you have some auction sites that are having, you know, specific world cup or soccer auctions. And, and to me, that says you, you have a lot of supply and, Maybe the demand is not as high because people are trying to, to kind of sell their soccer now if they're not fans or if they're not collectors and they're just saying, okay, this is the time to move those cards. And then you don't have as many buyers. So I'm, I'm looking more for you guys as, as this is a community. Like, what are your thoughts? Leave them below. Like, do you feel that there is a lot available out there? Because that's kind of how I'm feeling right now, but I would love to know your thoughts. But we're going to move past the U.S. men's national team right now. we got to kind of talk about the Netherlands and, and, and the opponent of the U.S. men's national team as we build up to tomorrow. But Cody Gakpo, 23 years old, has really been impressive at this World Cup. He's the only player in the World Cup to score a goal in every game that he's played. 
and and he doesn't have a ton of cards out there. Uh, so that you know, Mosaic Road to the World, uh, Mosaic uh, Qatar Road to the Qatar. Uh, set came out and he was in there. National Treasures, the Prism, but really that's about it. He plays for PSV in the Eredivisie. Has had a fabulous year for them. And and here, kind of the recent sales, you know, of National Treasures. Now this is rookie out of ninety nine. Again, they're all raw. Two sold on November twenty third, and one sold for two hundred and sixty five dollars, and the other one sold for two hundred and eighty one dollars. Now that was kind of newer release, and so you do expect cards to kind of depreciate and value after the release, but he has stayed fairly consistent. And then at NT out of 99, uh, November 29th, it sold for $272. So a slight decrease, uh, but it'll be interesting to see what he's able to do against the UN's men, U.S. men's national team tomorrow uh, as they, as the Netherlands look. Because, again, I, if, I'm not, if, my, if I'm not mistaken, they failed to qualify in 2018 uh, just like the U.S. men's national team. But he's in great form. There's even rumors floating around of, of a big move to, to a European club, uh, you know, a Premier League club. Man United, I saw, was in some of the rumor mills. So it'll be interesting. To, does he get that move in January? Is that going to come in the summer? But I think at 23 playing for PSV, it's only a matter of time before he gets that bigger move uh, to a bigger club. Uh, the other, you know, one of the guys that came out of nowhere here uh, in the last couple of games, Marcus Rashford. Uh, we know Marcus Rashford's quality. Uh, he's been around the Man United camp for a really, really long time. But, but he has been playing well for England. And with that, that great play, still just 25 years old, uh, but he had a big sale that I just wanted to point out. You know, when you play well, here is his 2020 Prism Signatures Gold. It is a, uh, a PSA 10. It is the auto out of 10. And it sold for $1,500. It was a best offer on the PWCC vault. Uh, but big sales when you you know, bag of race. And when you get two goals and you're tied for the lead in the golden boot. So big sale for Marcus Rashford, but some of the smaller stuff is starting to kind of creep up as well. So it's 2018 uh, Panini world cup prism. This is the blue, uh, the red blue wave. Uh, this is a PSA 10. I, I have the, the recent sale, but I also have the last two sales. This sold September 25th for 39.99 PSA 10. This sold again in October on the 15th for 39.99. Now, after his brace, after his two goals, it sold November 29th for $61. So you saw a good, you know, a good increase, a little over $20 in value increase as he has performed extremely well. Now, with the Ronaldo situation and, and pretty much his time over at Man United, I always was kind of like, I love Ronaldo. Don't get me wrong. I love watching him play, and I think he's fantastic, and he's one of the best who's ever played. But I thought his move to Man United – could stunt the growth and, you know, the abilities of some of these young players who are trying to uh, attacking players of Man United. And I think Rashford was one of those guys that kind of got hit the hardest because he just didn't see a whole lot of time. So it's really great to see him getting some time for England and making the most of it. You know, three goals uh, that he scored so far in the tournament is great. And you're seeing his pricing go up. And I think this is a, a result of kind of at 25, not really playing a whole lot in the Premier League for Man United. People had tended to forget about Rashford, or or you weren't seeing the numbers that were forcing prices to go up. So he's kind of on the fringes, and we've talked about that in the past. But now, as he comes full and center, there is room for those prices to go up, and they, they obviously have. And it'll be interesting to see what he does or if he gets some time here in the knockout stages. I do want to talk a little bit about Julian Alvarez as he uh, for, for Argentina as he has played well. He even got a goal uh, here in the last group stage game, and you kind of saw that bump in pricing too. Again, 22 years old, Manchester City uh, is back up to Erling Holland, so he doesn't get a ton of time at City, uh, but he is making the most of his time at the World Cup, getting some, some great game time as well. Uh, but his 2022 Panini Prism World Cup, this is his, uh, his blue prism out of 299. I wanted to kind of pick one that had a, a little bit of a larger number, 299, and you can see early on, November 28th, this card sold raw, the Prism, out of $299 for $78. Uh, on the 29th, it sold at auction for $68. And then finally, after that goal in the third group stage game, uh, it sold for $127.50. So uh, a pretty sizable jump. Again, this is a young player, so people tend to get excited about those young prospects and those young players, he being one of them. And getting that goal is going to cause those prices to go up a little bit.
Now we we do have to look at top scorers. You know the Golden Boot, who's going to win it? And and really we have five names who are tied for first. Uh, Enter Valencia for Ecuador. They did not qualify in the knockout stages, so he is capped at three. He is not going to score any more goals. But the other four, and I apologize for uh, you know the, the the list here. It's Alvaro Morata uh, for Atletico Madrid or for Spain. Uh, he is. It's not Mora. Uh, it's Morata. So sorry about the uh, the misspelling there. Uh, but Gakpo, Mbappe, Morata, and Rashford are all tied with three. Now there are is a, a large group of people who are coming up behind him at two goals apiece but these guys are currently in the lead all in great form all on teams that are moving into the knockout stages so pretty excited there and it'll be interesting to see how how they do as they enter into that knockout stages but here we go are you ready i am excited i am ecstatic i could not be more thrilled that the u.s men's national team has a game in the knockout stage. And if you ask me, you know, I think the burden has been lifted. You know, like the burden was to get out of group. And here we are out of group. Now, if you would have told me at the start of the World Cup that the U.S. men's national team was only going to score two goals in all of group play and move into the round of 16, I probably would have told you you're crazy and that's not going to happen. But Matt Turner has come to play. The U.S. men's national team has come to play. And we have a date with the Netherlands tomorrow. And, and I am pumped. I am ready. And I, you know, honestly, I think we're playing with house money. Like, we got nothing to lose. This is a young squad. You know, people are already thinking, you know, I can't wait for 2026 when it's here in the United States. And, and I'm with them. But we're here. And it's now, and it's our time to shine. It's going to be a difficult game. I get that. I know that. But watching how we played against England and watching how we played against Iran gives me confidence and gives me optimism that the United States is going to be able to make some noise against the Netherlands. Now, I would love to know your comments. You know, I know this is going to come out on the morning of or right around the time of kickoff, but do you think that we have a shot? Do you think that we can we can move on? Now, my biggest question is is still, and, and I would love to know your input. Uh, if you watched the whatnot live while we were watching the game, uh, my big take was... Gio Reyna, where are you? Where are you, Gio Reyna? You know, bring him on. I don't know what's going on. Not seeing a whole lot of minutes for the U.S. men's national team. You know, I mean, Kellen Acosta is getting on the pitch. You know, Shaq Moore is getting on the pitch. And and Gio Reyna is not. And he didn't look too happy after the win uh, against Iran. So I'm, I'm really monitoring that. I think he's really quality and could be a huge benefit uh, for the United States, even if it's just a super sub coming on in the 60, 65, 70th minute, I think he could play a really, really great role. But obviously, Greg has other uh, thoughts in mind. I would love to know your thoughts. You know, I don't. I already know Greg's thoughts. I know my own thoughts. You know, am I overreacting? Does Gio Reyna need to not fix uh, feature, or do you think? Are you kind of in line with me being like, yeah, we got to put our best players out there? So big, big game tomorrow. I know I, where I'll be. I'll be in front of my TV. Getting ready for that one. I hope everybody has a chance to watch that. Saturday morning uh, doesn't get much better than that. And then Sunday, we, we do get to see England. Uh, we get, take on Senegal, and France is going to take on Poland. Man, Mbappe versus Lewandowski. Uh, I would hope that France can move on uh, and then and continue on. I think they, they've been playing pretty well. Uh, I know they had a lot of uh, kind of their bench or their substitutes kind of play in that, that last game, but uh, Mbappe coming out, I'm looking to see if he can kind of take control and take over games. Uh, can he put the team on his back? Can they get a couple wins? And then Monday, we're looking at, you know, Brazil and Korea. Uh, it was great to see them kind of come out of group, but then Japan and Croatia, you know, that's an interesting matchup to me as well. And then we finish up the round of 16 on Tuesday, Morocco playing Spain, which should be interesting. You know, Morocco has been in great form. Uh, I would not uh, put it past them. It's been tough to, to get goals past them. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that game plays out with a Spain team that seems to have scored all their games in, in game one against Costa Rica when they won seven, nothing. Uh, and then it's been tough to find the back of the net for them. And then Portugal versus Switzerland and, and that game too, you know, watching Switzerland take on Serbia and win today, three to two. 
uh, they're they're a tough out. They're a tough team. So it's going to be really great. And the thing that I love about the knockout stages is like you can't really play for a tie. You can't play for points. You're not kind of thinking of like, how do I get out of group? No, no. It's win in advance, lose and go home. And, and these are kind of where those moments are created. You know, those countries that, that move on and make those deep runs. I could not be more excited for this section. You know, you have phase one, which is all about group play and you get four games a day and it's just fun to, you know, you can get up at 4 a.m. and watch soccer until, you know, for 12 hours uh, and listen to the pundits talking and it's, it's fabulous. Uh, but this is kind of the meat and potatoes of the World Cup. And, and I just can't wait to see how it plays out. And we do have some surprises in Australia, but then we also have, you know, the stalwart, the, the teams that we expected to be here, the Brazils, the Argentinas, the Englands, uh, and, and now, you know, in the Portugals. And, and my hope in, is that, you know, the U.S. men's national team comes out, plays well, maybe can even snag a win in the round of 16. But it's been so fun. And I don't know about you as we finish up today. I don't know about you, but, you know, I have friends who kind of, kind of laugh and joke that, you know, I collect soccer cards and, you know, I love soccer and soccer is my number one sport. And they kind of laugh and joke. And they were the first ones to be like, can we beat the Netherlands? Can we do it? Do you think we can make, like, they've been watching, you know, they've been, they've been in, they're into it. You know, they may not want to admit that they're into it, but I think this is fabulous for, for soccer in our country to, to watch these young guys, you know, give it their alls and their heart and souls and, and to get into the round of 16, but also for the community and the people, you know, the people are into it, the people, and I can, I can not even, you know, fathom, you know, two, three, four years ago where people, you know, would get super into, you know, the U S men's national team and buy in. Uh, but you know, when you put on the U S men's national team gear, uh, the United States just seems to come together. And so I am pumped for it. I hope that you are too. And we will have plenty to talk about uh, in four days as we finish up with the round of 16 and as we whittle this down again. So we go from 16 to 8 and, and we get closer and closer to some, some team, some country, not only hoisting that World Cup trophy, uh, but because of the uh, no alcohol in Qatar, Budweiser is, isn't Budweiser donating all of that uh, beer to the winning country. So that's interesting as well. Uh, so much to talk about, uh, so much that we can talk. I could talk for days on this, but I'll leave it at that for, for you guys today. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, uh, you know, any thoughts on today's episode, leave them in the comments below. Uh, but again, my name's Andrew at St. Croix Cards on Instagram. And thanks for listening to Slab Stocks FC World Cup show. Make it a great day, y'all.